12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. More than 80 gunshots fired a couple overnight on the city's northeast side. We have the latest from investigators on the scene. And San Antonio police investigating another shooting, this one fatal on the city's northwest side. How officers discovered the victim, that's coming up in just a few minutes. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 32 degrees to start your Sunday morning. A lot colder than what we saw yesterday, so what does the Sunday look like? Big game Sunday, we're going to check with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, February 13th. Yes. Yes. Okay, I, I saw 12. It says 12 in there, like, but I was like, ah, on. producers keeping us on our toes. On. Yesterday was a 12th. My. There you go. What'd you end up doing yesterday? Okay, so we went to Sam's Club, okay. battled the crowds there, went to HEB. Um, we survived. Okay. Because uh, everyone's out getting their barbecue and veggies. Got it. I mean, people, are you hosting a party? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, are that's you fair. Come back? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Sarah's fine. I'll be there. <laughs> Max, you gotta commit to the yeah. friendship yeah. here. I, I am GMSA friends. I'm in the middle. Friendship. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, hey, by this afternoon, guys, it's gonna be beautiful outside. 65 and sunny. Ooh. Right now, though, it is cold. In fact, many areas are below freezing. It's 25 in Bulverde, 28 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 23 in Comfort, 21 in Kerrville, 30 at JBSA Randolph, 22 in Lotus, 24 in Rio Medina, and 28 in Castroville. A wider view here it's 29 in Givaldi, uh, 22 in Fredericksburg, and 32 at Beeville. So most of us experiencing a freeze. And even though it says 33 degrees at the airport, that's the current temperature reading. Temperatures have been dipping back and forth below freezing at the airport in the overnight hours. Now, in spite of the cold start, it's going to be a lovely day. We're really going to warm up nicely. High temperatures will be in the mid 60s, 66 in New Braunfels, 66 for the high in Hondo, 64 in Kerrville, and 65 here in San Antonio, closer to 70 degrees out toward Del Rio. So coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about today's quick warm up. Valentine's Day forecast looks pretty dreamy and a shot at some storms later on this week. I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police are following up leads on a deadly shooting. The victim found shot to death in his vehicle parked outside a Northwest Side restaurant. Officers received a call around two this morning for a person slumped over in a vehicle in the Chili's parking lot off Loop 410 between Evers and Callahan Roads. Police say the man was shot several times. It's unclear if any arrests have been made, but police did say they have leads they are following up on. Right now, investigators are working to figure out what exactly prompted a shooting on the city's northeast side. That shooting ended with at least 80 gunshots. Somehow, the couple who BCSO says were the target of the shooting, that couple able to escape. Take a look. This was a scene just after 11 last night on Candlebright Drive. That's near North Foster and Ben Zingelman. We're told a couple returned home to find two men waiting for them. Those two men pulled out an AR-15 and a handgun and they started shooting at least 80 gunshots. Now the couple did manage to get away. They drove to the intersection of Foster and Ben Zingelman. That's where deputies found them with gunshot wounds, both taken to the hospital in serious condition. And at last check, no arrests have been made. Other top stories after two horrific cases of alleged child abuse, a community rallied to call for change. The basketball court at Al Forge Park became the site of an anti child abuse rally. All of this just days after 12 year old Donnie Coles and five year old Mercedes Lozoya died after alleged child abuse. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says his department and Child Protective Services were involved in Mercedes' case, yet they still failed to protect the little girl. He's at a loss on how to fix this heartbreaking problem. We say enough is enough over and over again, but apparently it, 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 you know, it just doesn't stop. And I don't know how to change. I don't know how we change people's behavior to make them stop. McManus went on to say he's happy arrests were made and hopes that justice is served. He is urging anyone who believes something could be happening behind closed doors to make a call that call could save a life. $40 worth of stolen copper now costing a medical center on the west side thousands of dollars. Police say suspects stripped copper off of electrical wires, cutting power off to an entire shopping center for hours yesterday. So this all happened at the corner of South Zarzamora and West Commerce. Now the regional director of the health facility says he found out about the power around 9 a.m. yesterday, adding for them the problem was much bigger 
than not being able to make transactions. I have uh, medications in my refrigerators, you know, I have vaccines, you know, not only flu, but even COVID vaccines. I need to make sure that those are secure and safe. And so we actually loaded those up into a, an ice chest and I transported them to my other clinic so that I didn't compromise the integrity of the vaccine. Pena says they were able to get the power back up and running by 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Luckily, no medications, no vaccines were lost. We're still waiting to learn if police have made any arrests. In your morning headlines, private American citizens in Ukraine are being put on high alert of a possible Russian invasion and urged to evacuate now. President Joe Biden told Russia's President Vladimir Putin that invading Ukraine would cause, quote, widespread human suffering and that the West was committed to diplomacy to end the crisis. He stressed that we were equally prepared for other scenarios. ABC's Ty Hernandez has the latest. The State Department continues to urge American citizens to leave Ukraine, with an official saying it's, quote, past time to leave. The State Department is ordering all U.S. embassy personnel, except a core team of diplomats, to leave Kiev immediately. Saturday, President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke on the phone. But an administration official says while the call was professional and substantive, there was, quote, no fundamental change in the dynamic. We're in the window uh, when a Russian invasion could start at any time if President Putin so decides. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also spoke with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, who denied Russia intends to invade Ukraine. An estimated 130,000 Russian troops are amassed along Ukraine's borders. More than 30 Russian warships are now in the Black Sea. The Ukrainian president at odds with the U.S. assessment of the threat of a Russian invasion. The best friend for enemies that is panic in our country. And all this information that helps only for panic doesn't help us. But the mayor of Kiev announcing a neighborhood by neighborhood evacuation plan for the ancient city's three million people. For Ukrainians, life goes on as usual. Both the U.S. and Russia agreeing to continue talking. A diplomatic path to resolving this crisis, a crisis created by the unprovoked massing of Russian forces all around Ukraine, that diplomatic path remains open. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Time now, 607, 32 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, it's Super Bowl Sunday, but there will be one man along the sidelines that will be representing the Lone Star State. You'll just guess where he's from. He's from Eagle Pass, which is in our viewing area. And now he's gonna be part of one of the biggest games. Who you got? Who's gonna win? I'll, I'll, I'll say when we're Okay. Yeah, Do yeah. prep work. That's you know who won last team. night, though? <laughs> Spurs. Ooh, go, Spurs. Spurs. Go. Two in a row. Rodeo Road Trip. Shaping up a lot better than a lot of people expected. We're going to give you highlights and what comes next in just a bit. Okay. The weather yesterday, way mm -hmm. too cold. That wind chill. The was, wind. Oh, it was, was fine. Brutal. But when the wind hit, oof. Brutal. And now it's 32 degrees. Sarah Spivey was warning about this whole day yesterday. She says we're going to have a beautiful Sunday, though. Oh. She'll explain when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is just getting started. If you're looking for more information about the rodeo, just head to our website or get this. We're in the 21st century. You can scan the QR code on your screen, pull out the phone, go to your camera, point it at the screen. It'll take you right to the ksat.com section. The grounds gates open 8 a.m. every day and the rodeo ends on the 27th. We're going to be there live Wednesday morning. What are you doing? I just was, I was testing the QR code. Okay, it worked? It worked. Look at that. Yeehaw. Ye yes, <laughs> yeehaw. Sarah Spivey, if people head out this week, what should they expect? Well, um, you know, honestly, this week's weather is going to be pretty nice. We do have a small chance for rain Wednesday and Wednesday night, but otherwise, it's going to be sunny and fairly comfortable outside. You know, yesterday was blustery. Those winds were howling from the north. We had wind gusts up to 45 miles per hour. Outside, though, right now, winds are calm, and they've been calm uh, throughout this morning. It's cold, though. At the airport, it's measuring 33 degrees, but we've actually been as low as 31 at the airport. So temperatures have been waffling uh, above and below freezing just in the last hour or so. But elsewhere, it's definitely below freezing. Outside of the city center, temperatures have fallen into the mid-20s in Rio Medina. Low 20s up in the hill country. It's 22 in Bandera, 21 in Kerrville, 23 in Comfort, 29 in New Braunfels, 30 at 
JBSA Randolph 32 at Stinson. You know, this is the time of year where you need to dress in layers. You need to wear the heavier jacket in the morning and then you shrug it off in the afternoon. It's cold out there this morning, just about everywhere across the KSAT 12 viewing area, well below freezing or in this case at the airport near freezing. And as I mentioned, shrugging it off because temperatures are going to climb very quickly here. We're going to be looking at highs in the mid 60s around San Antonio. So we'll already be uh, at 47 at 10, so well above freezing by 10. At noon, we'll be near 60 degrees. And then in the afternoon, 65 for the high. And look at that total sunshine across the board. Once the sun sets, though, tonight, temperatures are going to get cold very quickly. We'll be dropping into the 40s fairly quickly after sunset. Now, keep in mind that if you do have any Super Bowl parties tonight, it's going to be nice outside for grilling before the game. And even after the game, though, if you if you're planning on driving home, you'll need that jacket. OK, so not only is it going to be in the mid 60s around San Antonio, but all across the KSAT 12 viewing area, a fairly uniform day. The one exception is out toward Del Rio. Uh, temperatures should climb to near 70 degrees this afternoon. It's about five degrees warmer than uh, the rest of us. It's very dry out there. Dew points are are very low in the teens in many places. Dry air cools down and warms up very quickly. That's why we see the temperature extremes from the morning into the afternoon. But watch what happens over the next few days. We'll still have dry air out there tomorrow for your Monday. Dew points will be in the 20s, so another day where we'll have a cold morning for Valentine's morning and a comfortable afternoon. But by Tuesday, dew points are going to surge as we get a wind from the southeast. Dew points will be in the 40s by Tuesday morning and in the 50s by Tuesday afternoon. Fun weather fact, the temperature can never go below the dew point. So as the dew point is going up, our morning lows are going to go up as well. Tomorrow morning, Valentine's Day morning, will be near freezing. But by Tuesday, our morning lows will be in the 40s. And by Wednesday and Thursday, those morning lows are going to be in the 50s. You may not even need a light jacket by Wednesday and Thursday. Then we get a front Thursday, and that drops our morning lows back to near freezing, both Friday and Saturday. With that front Front, though on Thursday morning, really not a great chance for rain in San Antonio. Better rain chances across North Texas, but here we'll really only be looking at isolated storms, but we'll keep an eye on things again. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. If you have plans, look at this great weather. We'll be waking up again near freezing tomorrow morning and by noon already in the 60s afternoon high temperature near 70. Just a bit breezy tomorrow. South winds at 5 to 15 gusting up to 20 miles per hour and then looking ahead again. There's uh, the potential for an isolated storm Wednesday and Wednesday night. Otherwise, though, it's going to be a fairly quiet week. Hey, look at that big football on Sunday. Max is going to come back with a look at sports coming up. All right, Sarah Coates has already hit us with a yeehaw this morning, so you know the rodeo is in town. So we are on a rodeo road trip. Spurs on the second game of a back-to-back, -back, this one in NOLA. Take a look. High flying Spurs love to see it. Youth, enthusiasm, and defense. Here we go. Defense and offense. Bang! Lonnie Walker, track star. Number one, getting two. And here we go again. Running the floor, DeJounte. He is an all star and he's been playing like it. Up and under. And then there you go. Mr. Zach Collins showing off the dance moves. And up and under. Come on. Just putting on a show for all the wonderful people in New Orleans. And here we go. 4 3. Number 11. That is Josh Primo. Spurs would hit 14 threes last night, and they would go on to win, hold them out, and then look at this. Dancing, middle of the court, looking like Kyrie Irving out there, playing better than Kyrie, 124 to 114. We showed it a lot, you know, for, for spurts in the season versus good teams. Uh, I think just for us, we got to continue to play with that chip on our shoulders. We all got something to prove, each and one of us, and play together and have fun. Uh, I'm trying to smile and have fun more because when you have fun, it allows you to play, you know, really good basketball on both ends of the floor. You know, it's kind of like a cycle. It's fun. When you have fun, you win, but it's also fun when you win. You know Absolutely. what I mean? There you go. All right. So we are far from done. Like I said, roadie road trip. So next up tomorrow, 7 p.m. at the United Center in Chicago. 
We're going to have the Spurs taking on our old friend DeMar DeRozan. Tip off for 7 p.m. Now, this is just a small slice of a huge pie of sports we got coming your way throughout the morning. We're going to have high school hoops later. And then when one door closes, another one opens. A local high school football star, he was waived by the Seahawks, picked up by the Bengals. We got Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to tell you all about him. He might be related to someone who works here. What? Whoa! That's I a know. There you go. 621, 32 degrees out. All right. Well, speaking of the big game today, oh, big game. coming up after the break, how another local man is living the Texas football dream. Hey, he may not make plays on the field, but he helps make sure the players on the team are healthy. We'll share his story when we come back. Good morning and welcome back and happy Super Bowl Sunday from Eagle Pass to SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. A local man is headed to the Super Bowl. Roberto Cardona, Car Cardona grew up in Texas in the Texas-Mexico border town of Eagle Pass and later graduated from Our Lady of the Lake University. Now he's an athletic trainer for the Cincinnati Bengals. Talk about a dream job. So Lisa Berra talked to Cardona on the road about what today's big game means to him. Roberto Cardona is living the Texas football dream. They always dreamt being being able to play for the, the Lombardi Trophy, even if I'm not the one playing. He helps keep Cincinnati Bengal athletes, including quarterback Joe Burrow and tight end CJ Uzama, strong and healthy. I'm an assistant athletic trainer with the Cincinnati Bengals. We uh, deal with the prevention, uh, care, and rehabilitation and treatment of athletic injuries, and that, that starts in, in the offseason. But it all started along the Texas-Mexico border with the support of his parents. I was born in, in Mexico, uh, Piedras Negras, Coahuila, um, raised in Eagle Pass. Been around San Antonio all my life, really. After completing his undergrad at Our Lady of the Lake University, he went on to get his master's at Texas Tech's Health Sciences Center and worked for UTSA, Louisiana Tech. And in 2017, he finally got his start in the NFL. I got the uh, opportunity to be an athletic training fellow with the Cincinnati Bengals. I was had the opportunity for that two years, um, was promoted to assistant athletic trainer. Now it's time to focus as the Bengals will make their first Super Bowl appearance in 33 years as they face off against the LA Rams. Now we got to finish off strong and, and, and uh, complete the ultimate goal, right? Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Wow, so who are you rooting for now? Well, I've always been rooting for the Bengals. Okay, but does this push you even so further in the corner? Um, well, my family's from Eagle Pass, so okay. anyone that is doing great things from Eagle Pass, we are rooting. Yeah. There you come. All right, 626, 31 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, an argument between neighbors results in a man's neck being cut with a sword. Where this all happened and how the victim is doing. And a driver ejected from his vehicle after a crash on Highway 90. We have these stories and much more right after the break. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, Sunday, February 13th. It is Super Bowl Sunday. What is on the agenda? Um, well, got a new TV. Whoa. Uh, making fajitas. Ooh. Sarah Spivey made her buffalo chicken ranch dip. I did. Well done. That's yes. a lot. I am bringing it to your house, Sarah, and we're going to, I, I made it, and my husband was like, that's a lot of food for you and Sarah. And I was like, no. We eat a lot. It's for an entire group. Oh, man. Okay. So let's take a look outside right now. Temperatures are either at freezing or below freezing. It's extremely cold up in Kerrville. It's 19 degrees in Kerrville this morning. 29 in New Braunfels, 26 in Hondo, 28 in Pleasanton, 30 in Uvalde. And in spite of the fact that it is technically above freezing at the airport right now at 33 degrees, we've actually seen the temperature go up and down below freezing at the airport. So everybody dealing with a, at least a light freeze this morning, but the hill country in, in the middle of a hard freeze. So if you are planning on heading out to the rodeo today, know that it's going to be great. In spite of the cold start here this morning, even by 10, we'll already be in the upper 40s. And then by noon, we'll be close to 60 degrees. The afternoon calls for a high of 65. West Northwest winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. A beautiful Sunday. Uh, if you are planning on having a Super Bowl party, it's, it's going to be great outside if you wanted to grill or just uh, throw the football around. Now coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about the potential for rain this week and of course what you can expect for tomorrow, Valentine's Day, in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah.
Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a driver to lose control and crash on Highway 90 early this morning. Police say a man was driving westbound on 90 near Callahan when he lost control of his vehicle, hit a sign and rolled down the overpass. This all happening just before 4 a.m. The man was ejected from the vehicle and died. His name has not been released at this time. All right, heading to the northwest side, an argument over there ends with a suspect pulling out a sword and cutting a neighbor's neck. So this was a scene just after 1030 last night on West Broadview Drive near Bandera. Police on the scene telling us two neighbors were arguing outside their apartments. One of them pulled out a sword, cut the other across the neck. The victim got away, ran to his apartment and called for help. He was taken to University Hospital at last check in critical condition. As for the suspect, they were taken into custody. Right now, we are still waiting to learn what charges he'll face. We've learned the name of a woman who died in her home after it caught fire early Tuesday morning. She was 67 year old Kathy Babin. Firefighters got a call from her husband around 430 in the morning saying that their home was on fire. This all happening on M Miter Drive near Blanco Road. He said he got out safely, but his wife couldn't because she was bedridden. Officials say she was stuck in the bedroom where the fire started. By the time they reached her, it was too late. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Top stories this morning, the San Antonio Fire Department mourning the loss of one of their own. 24 year veteran Lieutenant Henshaw passed away after a battle with occupational cancer. All of this according to the department. So Henshaw's last assignment was at the Fire Training Academy where he served as a training officer. In a statement, the fire department said in part, quote, our SAFD family extends our most sincere condolences and sympathy with the Henshaw family and hope they all know that they will forever be a part of our family, end quote. Early voting begins tomorrow for the March primary election. There are several seats in the U.S. House of Representatives and U.S. Senate that are up for grabs. Texas is also one of 39 states with the gubernatorial elections this year. And for the first time in 20 years, Bear County will elect a new county judge after Judge Nelson Wolf announced he wouldn't be seeking another term. There is a lot to consider, and we have a lot of resources on KSAT.com, including a look at each party's ballot. And don't forget, there were changes made in regards to absentee ballots and voting by mail. We explain what you need to know. You can also find a list of early voting locations. Just take out your phone right now. You can use that QR code and take you right to the tab on KSAT.com where you can find all this information. All right, big news for NISD parents. Northside, don't forget, starting tomorrow, NISD will end their temporary mask mandate. The district will no longer require students to wear masks. However, it is still encouraged. Northside ISD says the decision comes as the number of COVID cases in the city and the county are continuing to go down. Well, Communities and Schools, it is a organization across the country and their mission is to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay in school and achieve in life. Recently, they received a huge multi-million dollar donation. So we're going to be talking about what that can mean for our local Bear County schools. Jessica Weaver, CEO of Communities and Schools San Antonio, is set to join us later this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m. We're going to be talking about the donation, what it means for our local districts and our local students, and how our local schools fare in comparison to others across the country. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Winter Olympic teams continue to mi their mission to bring home the gold. All right, so the U.S. men's team beating Canada in ice hockey. This is the team's first Olympic victory over Canada on the ice in 12 years. Wow, the U.S. faces Germany today. After that, the top-ranked teams in the competition will progress to the playoffs in pursuit of medals. ABC's Ty Hernandez has the latest. People in Beijing waking up to fresh snow on Sunday morning. A welcome sight for Olympics officials and organizers. It's the first time since the Winter Olympics began earlier this month. Meantime, Team USA winning another gold medal. Lindsay Jacobellis and Nick Baumgartner winning in the mixed snowboard cross. At 40 years old, Baumgartner the oldest snowboarder to win an Olympic medal. And at 36, Jacob Ellis the second oldest. 
And on the ice, a win for Team USA's men's hockey team, defeating Canada 4-2 in a preliminary round of the tournament. It was the first time the American men's hockey team beat Canada in the Olympics since 2010. The U.S. now gearing up to face Germany in the final match of that round. Meanwhile, the decision on whether 15-year-old Russian figure skater Kamila Valieva will be able to compete in the upcoming women's event hinges on an urgent hearing at the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Olympics officials told ABC's Alex Perche they're not worried about a potential delay on a decision. Given the time crunch here, are you confident that there will be a resolution to this by the 15th? There will be a resolution of this specific case, which is whether suspension will be lifted or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain of that. The controversy stemming from a positive drug test for a banned substance in December. The result not coming to light to the International Olympic Committee until after Valieva helped the Russian Olympic Committee win gold in the team skate event Monday. The Russian Olympic Committee has defended her, saying she passed doping tests before and after her positive drug test. The inaugural Olympic monobob competition beginning this weekend. Hires Taylor coming out a few spots behind her teammate in fourth. Both women tested positive for COVID recently, but they recovered in time to keep their Olympic hopes on track. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Have you watched any of this? Yes, I've been, I've been watching the ice skating. Um, the, what is it called? The Thank you, Sarah. Curling, the okay. curling. It's very entertaining. I did see a Texas man. He uh, did fake curling in his living room with uh, Roomba. He was great. Yeah, you got to do what I you got to do. I would him. It was really impressive. <laughs> 638, 32 degrees out. From playing high school football here in San Antonio, now playing for on football's biggest stage, still ahead on GMSA, how Judson alum Trey Flowers ended up getting to the Super Bowl. Ah, so cool. Plus, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, but... Don't get swept up in all the romance in there. You, you can a little bit, but you need to protect yourself from romance scams. We're gonna explain after the break. It's 32 degrees out. It is cold. It is very, very cold. I had to bring all my plants in last night. Um, that wind was so cold, but Sarah Spivey says it's gonna be a beautiful Sunday, especially for the big game. Shall have a forecast when we come back. Well, love, it hurts, and when it's a romance scam, it's a double-edged sword. All right, so the FTC reports that people lose more money on romance scams than any other type of fraud. In 2020 alone, romance scams reached $304 million in reported losses. That's up 50% from 2019. These scammers prey on people eager for love, but David Sears has tips on how you can protect your heart and your wallet. From stolen yachts and champion horses to money laundering criminal masterminds, Michelle Gomez specializes in locating hard to find items and people. You have to get inside the mind of the criminal. She is a skip tracer who's part PI and part bounty hunter. Michelle has a determination. She's not gonna stop until she gets done. And she loves taking on cases others can't solve. There is so much fraud going on. Women are getting taken for their money and men are too. Romance scams are the second most reported crime to the FBI, but Michelle says there are ways people can protect themselves. First, spot the warning signs. The moment a man asks you for money or the woman asks you for money, no, it's a flag. It's a, that's the start of their game. Also, be careful if the relationship is getting serious fast or if they break promises to see you in person. The COVID pandemic is making it easier for scammers to provide excuses to cancel first dates. Some scammers may even send photos of themselves to prove they are real, but a reverse image search can find out if the photos are associated with another name. If a woman or a man is eager to find love, they're blind. Talk to your close friend or family member about your new love interest. They may be able to spot things you may miss and save yourself and your wallet from heartbreak. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. All right, so speaking of Valentine's Day, are you guys both ready for Valentine's Day? Big plans? I haven't even thought about Valentine's Day because I've been so excited about the Super Bowl. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so get past today and then you'll worry about it. Get past today and see how my heart feels if the Bengals win or lose. Okay, you're a lot invested in this. I like, how you, call them, I mm. like how you call them the Bengals. The Bengals. Bengals. I, Justin Horn and I had this whole conversation. You, I don't know, you have to say Bengals. The right? Burrows. The Burrows. <laughs> there you go. That works. No Burrow.
That works. Hey, let's take a look at across the state of Texas. Now, this time yesterday, Texas was busy with some snow across uh, North Texas and some rain across East Texas, even some snow in East Texas as well. As you can see, though, things are quiet this morning across the Lone Star State. All of the uh, snow and precipitation and rain has moved off to the east. In fact, this was that same system that was making us very windy yesterday. Winds were gusting up to 45 miles per hour. That is off to the east, and we've really got a calm day in the forecast for your Sunday. It is cold, though, across the state of Texas. Many folks are below freezing, including the Panhandle 22 in Lubbock, 29 in Amarillo. Actually, locally around San Antonio, we've got some of the cold spots, uh, coldest spots across uh, the state of Texas. Kerrville was down to 19 degrees just a couple of minutes ago. Still at 21, well below freezing, hard freeze up there in the hill country. Meanwhile, a light freeze in New Braunfels, it's 29, 26 in Hondo, 29 in Uvalde, 26 in Pleasanton. And even though it says 33 in San Antonio at the airport, we have been below freezing this morning. So all of us have had a light freeze this morning around San Antonio and it's very dry outside. Dew points are in the teens. As I've mentioned before, dry air likes to cool down quickly and it likes to warm up quickly. And so warm up we will today. We're going to have tons of sunshine and in spite of the cold start, Look at what happens to our afternoon highs. We'll be in the mid 60s this afternoon. 65 in San Antonio, 66 in New Braunfels, 66 in Hondo, low 60s up in Rock Springs and closer to 70 degrees out toward Del Rio. But all in all, a very nice afternoon. If you have plans to grill outside uh, for Super Bowl Sunday, know that it's going to be a great day and we won't have to deal with the high winds. In fact, winds will really only be from the west northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So as I mentioned, we're in the 20s and low 30s right now, but even by 10, we'll already be in the upper 40s, right near 60 degrees at noon, pleasant in the afternoon and sunny 65. Once the sun sets, though, at 622, temperatures are going to drop very quickly. We'll be at 45 degrees by 10 p.m. and into the 30s by midnight. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I love this graphic. It reminds me of elementary school and getting those uh, little Valentines tomorrow morning we'll wake up at 33 degrees and then by noon it'll be 63 in the afternoon 70 for the high total sunshine tomorrow as well a wonderful valentine's day forecast now in spite of the fact that we've been getting some lovely weather out there with the sunshine we could use some rain. Take a look at drought conditions, especially off to the west. Severe drought for Del Rio, Pleasanton, uh, and even extreme drought for areas in uh, the southwest portion of our viewing area toward Catula. Even around Bear County, we've still got moderate drought, especially on the west and south side, uh, with better conditions across the north and to the east. And we are expecting some rain this week. Isolated in San Antonio will be on the tail end of the system, but the bullseye for, for storms is across northeast Texas, where in fact they could have some severe weather on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Again, we're going to be on the tail end of that system, so really only a chance for an isolated shower or storm Wednesday and isolated storms in the evening, Wednesday night into Thursday. Otherwise, we'll start a steady warm up trend through Wednesday will be close to 80 degrees Wednesday. Then that front moves through, bringing with it a small chance for storms and dropping our temperatures back to more seasonable uh, typical temperatures with cold starts in the morning to end the week and comfortable afternoons. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 32 degrees out. After the break, Max has a look at high school basketball. Oh yeah, we got high school hoops. But first, Take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, four, six, four, fireball two, daily four, one, zero, eight, five, fireball nine. Cash five, six, 18, 23, 29, 32, Texas lotto, 10, 17, 23, 34, 45, 46, powerball eight, 10, 21, 41, 62, powerball seven, power play three. Good morning and welcome back. Just a few games left in high school basketball regular season. So yesterday afternoon, Clark taking on Madison at Lee High School. District 28-6A action. Take a look. Lee High School 14-1 Clark against Madison. Cougars rolling. Just saw Jordan Mason get to Ethan Crowley down low. He put it in. 
Bang! Clark would lead by 28. They kept their foot on the gas that time. Mason with the lob to Dom for the beautiful lay-in. Clark wins 67-34. They are 15-1 and in district play. That's not all we got, though. We have Johnson taking on Lee. Volunteers trying to rally. They were down by 10 in the fourth quarter. Feet inside. Kashawn Napoleon for the bucket and one. Cuts the lead down to eight, but the Jaguars answer right back. They're pushing the break. David Payne, Kendall Dow, easy two points. Posted a game-high 22 points. Here we go. Johnson wins big 57-46. They are 11-4 in district play. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And here we go. Super Bowl Sunday, and we have an alum hitting the biggest stage in football. Judson Rocket alum Trey Flowers went from last place to first. And now... Super Bowl this season. So back in October, he was actually waived by the Seattle Seahawks. They finished last in the NFC West. The Bengals picked him up two days later and helped them win the AFC North. Plus, made some clutch plays during the Bengals' impressive playoff run at two today, Super Bowl Sunday. Speaking with the media Thursday, Trey wouldn't go into detail with how things ended with the Seahawks, but he did say he just goes with the flow. All right, it's all about mindsets and perspectives. On my end, I feel like you know I could I could have tucked my tail and been sad that things didn't work out in Seattle and they messed up another opportunity like this one. So I just take the punches and keep rolling with them. I make the most out of I make the best out of any situation. I put in, put in all types of adversity. I felt like my whole career. So it's nothing new. You know, you just got to make something work. And that has been the story with the Bengals. Impressive defense shutting down the Chiefs in the second half of the AFC Championship game. The Rams, Bengals, Super Bowl 56 from SoFi Stadium in Southern California. 5.30 this evening. And of course, you can count on the sports guys covering all these games and more tonight. Instant replay. Be sure to tune in 11 p.m. right after the night, Pete. There you go. If you were Mattress Mac and you had the million. Oh, my bet, goodness. <laughs> What team would you be betting on? If I was Mattress Mac. Well, he already put nine and a half million on the Bengals. I know. Is that the team you would put that nine and a half million on? <sighs> we got a lot more to talk about. We're running out of time. Oh, 655, 32 okay. degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, tensions rise as the risk of an imminent Russian invasion of Ukraine escalates. President Biden, during a high-stakes phone call with President Putin, warning that an attack on Ukraine would result in swift and severe costs. But is there a path to diplomacy? Despite the Kremlin's massive military buildup, our team on the ground in Kiev this morning. Plus, shooting investigation, two men facing felony charges in a potential hate crime against a black FedEx driver on the job. The attorney of the victim calling it an Ahmad Arbery copycat crime, how the authorities and the victim's employer are now responding. And Super Bowl Sunday, the big game between the Rams and the Bengals kicking off in just a few hours, how fans are celebrating and how the city is prioritizing safety. It's all ahead here on GMA. Well, it's now 31 in San Antonio at the airport. 30, though, at JBSA Randolph and up in Halota, it's 23 degrees. A cold start in Comfort, where it's 21, 20 in Kerrville, 28 in Castroville. You know what? It's just cold out there. No matter which way you look, well, temperatures are either at or well below freezing. And today, in spite of the cold start, look how quickly we're going to warm up. A cold temperature is turning comfortable really quickly. Even by 10, we'll still be in the we'll be in the upper 40s, and then by the afternoon, 65 for the high. West northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, getting chilly tonight. And then Valentine's Day looks great. A cold start in the morning, near freezing, but 70 in the afternoon. Even warmer Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday rather, a small chance for rain Wednesday night, but. Doesn't look like it's going to be a drought buster for us by any means. Most of the rain will be up in North Texas. Max, you didn't answer my question. What? If you were Mattress Max. Mattress Max. What team would you be <laughs> betting on, the 9.5 million? So I'm torn right now because my heart says Bengals, my head says Rams. So, so it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, so go with your heart. Go with oh, your heart. OK. We'll have a much better answer and a lot more to talk about coming up at 8 o'clock. We'll see you at 8. <laughs> Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A terrifying, deadly crash on Highway 90 early this morning. We have the latest from the investigation. A man's body found outside a local restaurant. How police discovered him. 
And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, the sun is out, but are the temperatures rising? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, February 13th. It is Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Very exciting day today. Are you going to be going for the Rams or the Bengals? This is like the question of the morning. This is the fifth <laughs> time you've asked. So it's been the controversy of well, the newsroom. You haven't answered my question. Hart is going for the Bengals. Love oh, Joey great. B. But uh, I, 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 yeah, um, that one. <laughs> um, I really like the Rams. I think it'll be good. I think uh, I think it'll be a great game, no matter what. I'm not one of those people that say, oh, I'm just rooting for a good game. I'm going to go with the Rams. I'm rooting for the commercials. Hey. And Sarah, who are you going for? Well, I'm not trying mm. to read Max's mind, mm. but he is wearing blue and yellow today. Oh, look at that. Good analytics over there. So, I think he wants to say he wants to go for the Bengals, but he's afraid if mm. he commits. I'm a huge Aaron Donald fan. I'll All say right. that. All right, Max. You know, I'll probably go for the Bengals, too, just because they beat my Chiefs and their AFC. So, <laughs> All right, it's cold out there this morning. Take a look at temperatures. We're at freezing right now at the airport. Uh, but it's 21 in Bulverde, 28 in at Bernie Stage Airfield, 21 in Comfort, 22 in Kerrville, 28 in Castroville. But as you just saw, the sun is out. And so today's going to really end up being a super day because we're going to quickly warm up here. Uh, by the afternoon, our high temperature will be right around 65 degrees. By mid-morning, we'll already be in the 50s. And in the afternoon, as I mentioned, a, a really nice and pleasant day. And we're not going to have the wind like like we had last uh, yesterday, rather our winds are actually only going to be from the west southwest at five to 10 miles per hour. It will get chilly though tonight after the sun sets. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about that quick warm up today. I'll show you uh, forecast highs around the entire KSAT 12 viewing area and tomorrow's going to be a dreamy Valentine's Day cold to start, but very comfortable in the afternoon. And we do have a shot at storms this week. I want to talk about that and what that means for San Antonio in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, investigators say a man is dead after he loses control and crashes on Highway 90 early this morning. Take a look. This was the scene. Police tell us a man was driving westbound on 90 near Callahan. He lost control of his vehicle, crashed into a sign, rolled down the overpass. All this happening just before 4 a.m. Now the driver ejected from the vehicle and died. We are still waiting to learn the identity. Also new this morning, police are following up on deadly on leads on a deadly shooting. The victim found shot to death in his vehicle parked outside a Northwest Side restaurant. Officers received a call around two this morning for a person slumped over in a car in the Chili's parking lot. That's off Loop 410 between Evers and Callahan Roads. Police say the man was shot several times. It's unclear if any arrests have been made, but police did say they have leads that they are following up on. Well, new this morning, an argument on the northwest side ends with a suspect pulling out a sword and cutting a man's neck. This was a scene just after 1030 last night on West Broadview Drive. That's near Bandera. Police on the scene telling us two men who are neighbors, they got into an argument outside their apartments. One of them pulled out a sword, cut the other across the neck. The victim was able to get away. He ran to his apartment. That's where he called for help. When police arrived, they took him to the hospital. At last check, he is in critical condition. The suspect, he was apprehended, taken into custody. Right now, we're still waiting to learn what charges he's going to face. Right now, investigators are working to figure out what prompted a shooting on the northeast side that ended with at least 80 gunshots. And somehow, the couple who BCSO says were the targets were able to escape. So just take a look at this video. This was a scene just after 11 last night on Candlebright Drive near North Foster and Ben's Engelman. We are told the couple returned home to find two men waiting for them. Allegedly, the men pulled out an AR-15 and a handgun and started shooting at least 80 rounds. The couple managed to get away and drove to the intersection of Foster and Ben's Engelman, where deputies found them with gunshot wounds. Both were taken to the hospital in serious condition, and at last check, no arrests have been made. Well, in the aftermath of the horrific deaths of two children in two separate incidents over the last week, the San Antonio community came together and rallied for change. So the basketball court at the Forge Park became the site of an anti-child abuse rally. You know, the gathering comes after 12-year-old Danilo Coles and 5-year-old Mercedes Lasoya died after alleged child abuse. Now, the police chief, William McManus, says his department and the Child Protective Services, they were involved in Mercedes' case, yet they still failed to protect the little girl. 
Now, the chief is at a loss on how to fix this heartbreaking problem. We say enough is enough over and over again, but apparently it, 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 you know, it just doesn't stop. And I don't know how to change. I don't know how we change people's behavior to make them stop. Now, the chief did go on to say he was pleased that arrests were made and hopes that justice will be served. McManus now urging anyone who believes something can be happening behind closed doors to call police. That call can help save a life. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help to find an 82 year old man who was last seen last month. This is Raul Gonzalez Robles. His family reported that he disappeared on Thursday. He was last seen on January 21st in the central part of San Antonio, but say he could possibly gone to Mexico. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call BCSO Missing Persons Unit. That number on your screen 210-335. Six zero zero zero. Communities and schools is an organization with a mission to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay in school and achieve in life. Recently, they received a huge multi-million dollar donation, and that can mean a lot for our local Bear County schools. So joining us on today's Leading SA segment is Jessica Weaver. She is the CEO of Communities and Schools San Antonio. Good morning, Jessica. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. First and foremost, what exactly is Community and Schools? To kind of explain it to our viewers. So Communities and Schools, so we're a nonprofit, and what we do is we come alongside our school districts. We bring in, um, as you mentioned, our, our mission statement is surrounding students with a community of support and ultimately empowering them to stay in school. And how we do that is we embed full-time professional staff. Our backgrounds are social work and counseling and we embed them in the schools. And so what we do is we come aside, partner with our school counselors and our teachers and offer support services to students um, with any challenges that they may be facing. And so we want our teachers to be doing the best that they can by teaching, but sometimes there's obstacles that get in the way of that learning. And so we're there to help support and bring those resources to our kids. and. And we say we bring and we surround our students with a community of support because our community allows offers so many different resources. But sometimes it's hard to access those without knowing how to um, where to find them and how to get to them. And so what our staff do is really walk alongside our kids and really help them and figure out what are the challenges, what can we do to help them and then support them in that end. Um, and so really coming alongside and embedding. And then on top of that is really looking at the whole child and the family and the dynamics that they need and support to, to be their very best, that our kids can meet their greatest potential. So how can parents see the local impact in our community? So I will tell you that the last two years have been challenging, right, for everyone. And so this gift has really been great, an uplift to the to the expansion that we've been asked for. And so many of our districts have asked us to move into more schools. And so this really helps us to leverage that opportunity and to continue to increase our capacity around the city. And so I hope that more parents will be able to see the communities and schools representative in their campus, helping students and being a resource and allowing our students to get that support. So, um, it's really increasing our capacity. Our work is really done by our staff being there for our kids every day, whatever day that their challenge may come and to be there consistently. And so hopefully we will, our parents will see that we are in more campuses and really and that opportunity to, to be able to reach out to someone who can really help them through any kind of challenges that their child or their family may be facing. Now, CIS is a national organization, but you specialize yes. here in, in Bear County. You know, what are some unique issues that you're seeing here that other districts around the country may not see? Well, I mean, I think what we have found is there's been some consistency more than unique just because COVID hasn't been one in one particular area, right? And so there are times where we, maybe a natural disaster hits one area, but COVID has just been across the board. And so some of the things that we have noticed that, you know, we've had to really face is kids have been out of school and that engagement and getting that engagement back into that process it has been work. And so some of our kids have had have just been challenged in really being engaged and but figuring out how do you work back in that campus? How do you work with kids again? How do you work with you know other people? And so 
I think that's been a common thing that we've seen across our districts. And I think for San Antonio, what you know, what's unique to us is we have so many school districts. So it's not that you're, you know, you get to you get to see if there are some things that are happening across the border, if there are trends. And those trends are really everywhere. Um, so that's one thing is that disengagement. But you know, kids went without, you know, their continuous learning. And so there's no way that that did not impact them. And so everyone's trying to catch up, but our kids are working really hard. And I think people, um, we might forget that. We think about all that, um, the challenge that came with it, but our kids are working really hard and are are glad to be back in school. And so I think those are two things that are have really been a detriment. And so our kids are trying to learn that social skills again. How do, how do you get back into that process? And so, it's just it's been a challenge for our schools to bring our kids back and get them you know set and ready and but um but schools have been a safe place for our kids as well and so we need um we need our schools to be there for our kids well jessica thank you so much for taking the time to join us this morning of course for our viewers you can see jessica weaver's full interview later on ksat.com thank you jessica thanks for having us Time now, 8-11, 33 degrees out. Well, straight ahead on GMSA, going beneath the earth to understand why the Edwards Aquifer is considered more than just water. Let's take a live look out there, 33 degrees. If you didn't know the temperature, it would look perfect out there. Look at that, I don't even see a cloud in the sky. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast. Well, last week we told you about a very special teddy bear that was found at a, the Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport. So the owner of the bear has been found. The bear was left behind at the airport at the beginning of the year. Airport officials turned to social media to ask for help finding the bear's owner. The post ended up being shared more than 12,000 times and it worked. The bear is considered special because it's given the children who are born with congenital heart defects. As the owner was being tracked down, Teddy was enjoying the airport by taking photos with some new friends. The airport says the owner has been located and plans are in place to get the bear home. Adorable. All so right. cute. Time now, 816. Sarah Spivey, it is cold. Yeah, it's cold out there. We got down to 30 degrees in San Antonio. We're only a couple of degrees warmer right now, but it is quiet across the state of Texas. You know, this time yesterday we were seeing snow in North Texas and East Texas, even some sleet up in Austin and some sleet pellets mixed in with some rain near Canyon Lake. It stayed dry in San Antonio, but it was windy in San Antonio. All of the, that system is pushing off to the east and actually bringing some snowfall to uh, the Northeast and New England and taking those gusty winds with it. Today is going to be a much calmer day, but it is cold as we start start off our Sunday. Temperatures across the state of Texas are either near freezing or below freezing. In fact, right now, one of the coldest spots across the state is in the Hill Country. It's 22 degrees in Kerrville, 22 in Fredericksburg, 22 in Junction and 19 in Ozona this morning. Now, San Antonio currently at freezing, but we're warming up as we speak all because of sunshine and dry air. Dry air is in place. Two points are in the teens and in the 20s. That is very dry air. You'll hear us say this often at KSAT, but anytime we have a dry atmosphere, the air cools down quickly and it warms up quickly. So we had the cold start this morning, but we're going to have a very comfortable afternoon because of the dry air and complete sunshine. Temperatures are going to rebound by some 30 degrees and we'll be looking at highs in the mid 60s all across the area. 66 in New Braunfels for the high, 66 in Pleasanton, 64 in Kerrville, 62 in Rock Springs, 65 in San Antonio, a little bit closer to 70 degrees the further west you go toward Del Rio. All in all, a very nice day out there. In fact, we're going to warm up so quickly, we'll already be in the upper 40s by 10 just in an hour and a half or so. And by noon, we'll be near 60 degrees. 65, as I mentioned, for the high. But once the sun sets, it is going to become chilly. Temperatures are going to drop very quickly into the 40s by 10 p.m. So if you have plans to watch the Super Bowl, maybe you want to go outside. In the evening hours, you're going to need that light jacket. Uh, winds from the west northwest today, a lot calmer than yesterday at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I love this graphic because it reminds
reminds me of the Valentine's you get in elementary school. Temperatures are going to start off near freezing early tomorrow morning because again, we're going to have that dry atmosphere in place. So temperatures will cool down very quickly. I would not doubt if we have a light frost or freeze rather in some areas uh, early tomorrow morning. But then again, by noon will be 30 degrees warmer, 63 and the afternoon high temperature tomorrow looks really nice 70 degrees. Now we really do need some rain drought conditions have been expanding further west. You can see severe drought in Del Rio, severe drought in Eagle Pass and even extreme drought across the south central portion southwest portions of our viewing area here in Bear County. Uh, improvement to the north and to the east, but there's still moderate drought across parts of West Bear County and South Bear County. We do have a chance for rain in the forecast Wednesday night into Thursday, but the better rain chances and the better storm chances are going to be up I-35 toward Waco and Dallas and out across East Texas. In fact, in these areas that are outlined in this yellow, there is a severe weather potential Wednesday and Wednesday night. Again, we're going to be on the tail end of that system, and right now we're not flagged for a severe weather potential, but it is something we're going to be keeping an eye on. Rain chances really are not all that great. Wednesday, only an isolated shower or storm, and Wednesday night into Thursday as that front moves through a chance for some isolated storms storms as well. Otherwise, it's going to be quiet for the start of the week. Temperatures will warm up to near 80 degrees by Wednesday. That front moving through Thursday, it's going to be noticeable, but not necessarily very strong. Morning lows will be back near freezing Friday and Saturday and highs will be near 60. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 820, 35 degrees out. A new episode of Case That Explains takes an in-depth look at the Edwards Aquifer. Literally, the story is coming up after the break. So when you hear the word aquifer, one word, of course, comes to mind. It's water, mm -hmm. but there is a lot more to it than the, just that. All right, so it is the focus of the new episode of Case That Explains. It is out and available to stream right now. So meteorologist Justin Horn and our very own Sarah Spivey, they take the reins. So here they are with the story behind Case That Explains, the Edwards Aquifer. <laughs> You know, growing up in San Antonio, I would hear about the aquifer and how its levels needed to be at a certain amount. And I always thought when I was younger that that was because we were trying to conserve the amount of water in the aquifer. Well, it wasn't until I started working at KSAT that I found out that that's not true at all. The only reason that we really monitor the water level is to keep the aquifer's water clean clear and flowing so that endangered species can stay healthy. I've kind of always known that the federal government was involved at one point in the Edwards Aquifer and, and dictating how the water levels, uh, where, where they needed to be, but I didn't know how involved they were and kind of why we do what we do as far as the endangered species and why we keep aquifer levels where they are, at least attempt to. Something really cool is I actually got to interact with Texas blind salamanders, one of those species that is threatened in the aquifer. The Texas blind salamander is one of the creepiest and one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. One thing that I got to do that I've never got to do, uh, I asked before, but this is the first time we were granted access, was to see the J-17 well. Never seen it before. It's nothing exciting. It literally is just a hole in the ground in a building. But it is so important, and it's kind of that juxtaposition of something that's so important, just sitting in a building uh, at Fort Sam Houston, and the importance of that well itself is, uh, is huge. We encourage everyone to check out this episode about the Edwards Aquifer on Case That Explains. If you care about water and you care about the future of San Antonio, there's some good, important information in there. You can stream the Case That Explains Edwards Aquifer episode right now on ksat.com slash explains and on the KSAT Plus app available anywhere you stream. Uh, we just really have the best meteorologists. Not only do they do a great job forecasting, but really explaining and breaking down the importance of things like the aquifer. There you go, ksat.com. 826, 35 degrees out. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Tonight we find out who the new NFL champions will be. The preview straight ahead. All right, trying to stay warm while taking a nap on the back patio ends flames. Inside a house on the east side, we have the details. 
Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, February 13th. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, but more importantly, today is more importantly, big super game. See what is there? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's Super Bowl Sunday. Who you got? Bengals. Joe okay. Burrow. Just Joe hard Burrow. line. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Sarah yeah. Spivey. You know, I'm going to root for the Bengals, too. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Max is wearing yellow and blue, if mm. that tells you anything. He's a Bengals folks. fan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, <not>. But, <laughs> hey, I, it's going to be a good game regardless, and both of those teams are deserving uh, of the Super Bowl win. All right, let's take a look outside right now. We have got clear skies, sunny skies around San Antonio and around the entire state of Texas. It is 32 degrees right now, but temperatures are warming up as we speak. In fact, that's the official temperature at the airport, but look at that bug there down at the bottom of your screen. It already says 36. We're warming up around uh, South Central Texas because of the sun. It's still below freezing though in Kerrville at 26, 26 in Hondo, 32 in Uvalde, 32 in Rock Springs, and 31 in New Braunfels. Rodeo's going on this weekend, and if you're planning on being out and about at the rodeo or just out and about in general. Things are going to be really nice. In fact, we'll already be in the upper 40s by 10 just in an hour and a half. And then by noon, near 60, afternoon high temperature of 65. So we started off cold, we'll end up comfortable, and winds will not be as strong as yesterday. Winds from the west northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hey, in the week ahead, we do have a small chance for rain that I want to mention and a chance for storms across parts of Texas. We'll talk about that and, of course, your beautiful Valentine's Day forecast as well in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a homeowner sleeping on his back patio wakes up to find flames filling his home. So take a look. This all happened in the 100 block of Elizondo Way. That's near Foster Road on the city's east side. Firefighters on the scene telling us the homeowner was using a propane tower heater to stay warm while he was sleeping on the patio. They say he woke up after smelling something burning. The heater apparently caught the attic on fire. Now, the homeowner tried to put out the flames himself. It was too much. He called for firefighters. They were able to stop the flames. Damage, though, to the home estimated at $60,000. But importantly, no injuries reported. We have new information this morning on that fatal fire that happened on the north side back on Tuesday. The victim's name has now been released, 67-year-old Kathy Babin. She was killed early Tuesday morning. The flames happened in the 9500 block of Miter near Loop 410 and Blanco Road. After that home caught fire, investigators say the woman's husband was able to get out safely, but his wife wasn't because she was bedridden. Officials say she was stuck in the bedroom where the fire started. By the time they reached her, it was too late. Investigators are still looking into the cause of that fire. Well, $40 worth of copper is now costing a medical clinic on the west side thousands. So this all happened at a shopping center located at South Stars Moore in West Commerce. Police say thieves stripped copper off of the electric wiring, cutting off power to the entire center for hours, including this medical clinic. Now, the regional director of the clinic well, he says the power outage was much bigger than not being able to make transactions. I have uh, medications in my refrigerators, you know, I have vaccines, you know, not only flu, but even COVID vaccines. We need to make sure that those are secure and safe. And so we actually loaded those up into a, an ice chest and I transported them to my other clinic so that I didn't compromise the integrity of the vaccine. Pena says they were able to get power back up and running by 2.30. Luckily, no medication, no vaccines were lost in this process. As for the suspects, no arrests have yet been made. Happening today, UIW School of Nursing is hosting a health clinic offering COVID-19 vaccines, testing, and other health screenings. It's happening today at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. That's on the city's west side. It's being held from 10 in the morning to 3 p.m. You'll be able to get your first and second and booster doses. In addition, we... You can receive information on the affordable health care plan, Medicaid, free kidney screenings, and free vision exams. Plus, city staffers will be on hand to give information on mortgage, utility, and internet assistance. All right, a new drug that seems to work against the Omicron variant has received federal authorization. The FDA authorizing the treatment that involves monoclonal antibodies that contain lab-made proteins, and these proteins can actually mimic the immune system's ability to fight harmful invaders like COVID. Now, Health and Human Services says they have purchased 600,000 courses of the treatment. In a trial, the treatment reduced the time someone had COVID symptoms 
five days after getting the treatment, trial patients had a reduced viral impact. The new treatment can be used in people over the age of 12 years old. Tomorrow, early voting for the March primary begins. To find early voting locations, information on candidates and the races appearing on the ballot, take out your phone right now and open your camera app. You can scan the QR code that's on your screen now. It'll take you straight to ksat.com. Once there, you can scroll down to the page and find all that election information you need. Remember, the last day of early voting is February 25th. And if you're looking for a job, East Central ISD will be hosting a job fair tomorrow. It'll be held at, it'll be held from 1 to 4 p.m. at Legacy Middle School. It's located off Loop 410 between East South Cross and South WW White Road. The school district is looking for custodians, bus drivers, substitutes. I know that's been in high demand for a while and more. If you're interested in attending the job fair, you can apply online at ecisd.net. All right, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is underway. For full details on what is happening, when, where, and what time, we have all that info right now, ksat.com. Here's the thing, we created a little shortcut for you. If you pull out your phone, go to the camera section, point it right there at that little black and white thing on your screen, it'll get you a direct link right to everything you need to know. Grounds open, 8 a.m. every day. The rodeo ends on the 27th. In your morning headline, seven Chicago firefighters injured battling a large house fire. Less than 10 minutes on the scene, firefighters called for a May Day. Firefighters described heavy smoke on the second floor, and officials believe a flashover blew four firefighters off the porch. Those four plus three more firefighters were taken to the hospital. One person was home at the time of the fire but was able to get out. The cause of the fire still under investigation. Equifax has agreed to provide millions of Americans with four years of free credit monitoring because of the 2017 data breach. The Federal Trade Commission believes 147 million people had their private information like social security numbers compromised. Settlement negotiations had been going on for months, but it did not actually take effect until this January. Equifax will begin the process of notifying customers by email. A website has been set up to answer questions. It's EquifaxBreachSettlement.com. Some news you need to know. There are several recalls that have been issued pertaining to things like mattresses, space heaters, and yes, even COVID home test kits. The FDA says they may not be reliable. 12 on your side of Marilyn Morris explains. COVID test recall. SD Biosensor is recalling the standard Q COVID-19 home tests because they were illegally imported. The FDA says they're not approved for use here. And if you have one, throw it out. And if you've used one, consider a retest. Sleep danger. Serta is recalling some perfect sleeper mattresses, all sizes, because they don't meet flammability standards and are a fire risk. They were sold last year at Ashley Furniture, Macy's, and Sam's Club. Contact Serta. Space heater alert. Shop LC is recalling thousands of these personal space heaters because they can overheat and start a fire. Unplug them and contact the company to get your money back. Fall danger. Harbor Freight Tools is recalling nearly a half million red swivel stools. They're the Pittsburgh Automotive pneumatic roller seats. The company has nearly 100 reports of the seat connection breaking. Take it back. And ping pong trouble. Escalade Sports is recalling 5,200 Avenger tables sold last fall at Target. The table can collapse if you lean on it. You should contact Escalade Sports for a repair kit or a refund. For more information on any of these recalls, head on over to our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Okay, the game America loves is finally here. Super Bowl 56 and hitting the gridiron, the Los Angeles Rams against the Cincinnati Bengals. ABC's Morgan Norwood has a preview of the most watched program in the United States every year. Super Bowl 56 between the Cincinnati Bengals and Los Angeles Rams is just hours away. The Bengals overcoming a dreadful 2020 season to make it to the big game this year. They're led by second year quarterback Joe Burrow. Guys who go an entire career without ever, ever even getting to the Super Bowl. So, you know, when you do get there, you really have to, you know, hunker down and take advantage of those opportunities. And you know, I think 
we have the team that's capable of doing that. For the second year in a row, one of the teams playing in the Super Bowl will be in their home stadium. Guided by veteran quarterback Matthew Stafford, the Rams punched their ticket by defeating the Arizona Cardinals, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the 49ers. This team has sacrificed a lot and gone through a lot to get to the point that we are. Um, we're excited to be able to do it in our home stadium. But casting a shadow on the game are the lawsuits filed by former Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores. Flores, who was black, was fired from the team after back-to-back -back winning seasons and is suing the league and several teams for what he calls racist hiring practices. With 32 teams, Thank only you, three coaches black, and two of them were hired after Flores' lawsuit. Uh, I think we made a tremendous amount, a lot of progress in a lot of areas but not at the head coach. Federal officials say security will be tight from aircraft above SoFi Stadium to an added police presence on the ground, along with bomb sniffing dogs. Law enforcement say they're not taking any chances. And that highly anticipated halftime show will feature Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, and Mary J. Blige all on the same stage. Kickoff set for 6.30 p.m. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Just to be clear, it's 6.30 Eastern, we're 5.30. 5 here. Yeah. Just, don't. you know, get ready. Turn on, start watching commercials around 5. That's okay. That's get good. Okay. Yeah. That's a good thing to know. 841, 37 degrees out. And speaking of the Super Bowl, we have a local connection. A Judson alum is on the Bengals. That is one reason. If you are looking for a team to root for, if you're a Cowboys fan, go for the Bengals. There you go. 37 degrees, we have warmed up. Earlier it was 30 degrees, it was really cold, and yesterday that wind was not fun. But Sarah says today is gonna be a very pretty one. She'll explain when we come back. Inflation soaring, tensions with Russia, so much on the line. Sunday, two big exclusives. Nancy Pelosi faces George and the tough questions. And Lindsey Graham, is Trump the future of his party? Will he back the president's Supreme Court pick? Sunday on ABC's This Week. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Super Bowl Sunday. 37 degrees out there, Sarah. Is it going to get warmer? Yes, and it's already getting warmer. You know, we got down to, hello Hi. again. Hi. We got down to 28 degrees this morning, officially. Ooh. And as you can see down there on that bug, we've already are at 37, but the airport is still measuring the temperature from the top of the hour. So that's why it still says 32. All in all, though, it is cold out there still this morning, even though temperatures are rising. It's 35 in Canyon Lake, 34 Bernie Stage Airfield. It's still in the 20s up in Kerrville and in Comfort, 24 in Bandera, 26 in Hondo, but it's above freezing now in Castroville, and it's 36 degrees in Pleasanton, 33 in Del Rio, 37 in Yavaldi, 36 in Rock Springs and 37 in Beeville. In just an hour here, we've already seen the temperature go up by almost nine degrees. And so today is going to call for a quick warm up. In fact, in the next hour, we'll already be in the upper 40s. And by noon, we'll be near 60 degrees. So it is going to be totally sunny and beautiful today. A lot of people are going to be gathering uh, for the Super Bowl. It's going to be really nice for any kind of outdoor grilling or things like that. We'll be at 65 this afternoon. West Northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour today. So a lot calmer on the wind front compared to yesterday. Now at sunset at 622, we're going to see temperatures drop really quickly. We've got a dry atmosphere in place and that allows for temperatures to fall by about uh, midnight. We'll already start to be dipping into the 30s. So today's forecast, as I mentioned, not only is it going to be 65 in San Antonio, but all across the KSAT 12 viewing area, we'll be seeing an afternoon high in the mid to upper 60s, 66 in New Braunfels and in Hondo and in Pleasanton and out to the west will be closer to 70 out toward Del Rio, 64 in Gonzales to the east. So I just mentioned our dry atmosphere and how a dry atmosphere really loves to cool down quickly and warm up quickly. Dew points are in the teens right now. We're going to continue to see dew points low through Monday, so you can expect for your Valentine's Day a cold start uh, and then a comfortable afternoon. But watch what happens by Tuesday morning. We really tap into that Gulf of Mexico moisture and dew points actually rise into the 40s. A fun weather fact is that the temperature can never be below the dew point temperature, so 
With dew points rising slightly, we're going to see morning low temperatures not as cold, especially by Wednesday when dew points will be in the uh, 50s for the start of the day. So although we started off at 28 today and will be cold tomorrow morning, by Tuesday morning it'll be chilly but not necessarily cold in the 40s. And by Wednesday and Thursday, those morning lows will actually be in the 50s before we get another cold front that allows for us to see a light freeze Friday and Saturday morning. With that front, there is the potential for some isolated storms Wednesday and Thursday, but we really don't see any uh, big rainmakers for the San Antonio area. In fact, Wednesday and Thursday's rain chance looks best up near Dallas Fort Worth and along that I 35 corridor up to the north. So tomorrow Valentine's Day, another dry day, so we'll have the cold mornings. 33 for the morning low. I wouldn't doubt if there was a little bit of a light freeze outside of the city center, so up in the hill country and out to the west. Uh, but because of the sun, we'll already be in the 60s by noon and in the afternoon tomorrow, 70 for the high. We'll be a touch breezy winds from the south gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. So a nice Valentine's Day after the nice day today. It's going to be a nice Tuesday too, just not as cold in the morning. And by Wednesday and Thursday, that's when we'll be looking for the rainfall, although it will be isolated. Uh, Wednesday and Wednesday night. That front will move through. Not a particularly strong cold front, but definitely noticeable. Our morning lows will be back to near freezing and our afternoons will be near 60 degrees by Friday and Saturday. We've yet to get the pollen count in, Max and Sarah, but as soon as we do, I'll be posting that on KSAT.com. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Guess what today is? What's today? It is Super Bowl Go Sunday. Forward. Here we go. And here's the best part. We have a local connection. Talk about how things can change in less than a year. Judson Rock alum Trey Flowers. He went from last to first and now he is in the Super Bowl this season. So back in October, he was waived by the Seattle Seahawks. They finished last in the NFC West. Just two days later, the Bengals picked him up and he, along with that fantastic defensive front, helped win the AFC North and then subsequently the AFC. Not to mention he's made some top tier clutch plays during the playoff run to the Super Bowl. Speaking with the media on Thursday, he wouldn't go into details about how or why things ended in Seattle, but he did say just goes with the flow. Uh, it's all about mindsets and perspectives. On my end, I feel like you know I could I could have tucked my tail and been sad that things didn't work out in Seattle and they messed up another opportunity like this one. So I just take the punches and keep rolling with them. I make the most out of I make the best out of any situation. I've been put in all types of adversity. I felt like my whole career. So it's nothing new. You know, you just got to make something work. All right, so Super Bowl 56, SoFi Stadium in Southern California. Rams, Bengals, kickoff 5.30. I know a lot of people are rooting for the Judson Lund, Trey Flowers, or the Bengals. So, you know what? To whomever you are rooting for, I hope you're right. There you go. I hope I'm right. You're, of course you do. <laughs> 8.51, 37 degrees out. All right, dating deal breakers, what's oh. yours? Oh, gosh, we don't think we have time for that list. All right, we look at how the pandemic has changed many people's perspective and why experts say it's good to have them. That's tomorrow on GMSA. The news you need to know before you go, police investigating a deadly crash on Highway 90 that happened just before 4 a.m. Now, police telling us the victim was headed westbound on 90 near Callahan. He lost control of his vehicle, crashed into a sign. The vehicle rolled down the overpass. The driver ejected from the lit vehicle and later died. We are still waiting to learn the name of that victim. We got the pollen count in today and it doesn't look pretty at all. Uh, Mount Cedar is high in today's pollen count past 4,000. Molds are mm. low. As far as temperatures go, we're already in, in the 40s in San Oof. Antonio. So a quick warm up has occurred and we'll see uh, temperatures continue to rise. By noon, we'll be near 60, 65 for the afternoon high. West, northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then looking ahead tomorrow, Valentine's Aww. Day, things are going to be nice. A cold start, but a comfortable afternoon. A small chance for rain this week, Wednesday and Wednesday night. Okay. All right, before we go, go. I'm, I'm reading for the Bengals, but also I don't have a dog in the fight, so I'm good. I'm going ramps. I think Matt Stafford Ooh. was stuck in Detroit going for a long there. time. Love Aaron Donald. So we'll see. Go Bengals, go commercials, go halftime show. <laughs> Happy Sunday.